Hi, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com, and today we have an instructional video on chart notes. We're going to get you started with annotations on your sharp charts. Here are the topics and timeline for today. First, we're going to show you why it is important to annotate your sharp charts and how these annotations can make you a better trader or investor. We'll show you how to open and save chart notes. We'll show you how the two different toolbars work. We'll start with some basic annotations by drawing trend lines. We'll show you how to save those annotations so you can refer to them later. And we'll show you some shortcuts and where you can get further help on chart notes. So why would we want to annotate a sharp chart? Well, here's a basic sharp chart for QQQ, and it's got a moving average. And sure, we can probably identify the long-term trend here, but as far as actionable setups and stuff, we need to put some annotations on this chart. So basically, when you annotate a sharp chart, it comes to life, and it puts your thoughts on that chart so you know what has happened, what is happening right now, and it gives you a better idea of what to expect. All right, you can draw support, you can draw resistance, you can draw trend lines, you can put patterns at work. And when you put your thoughts on the chart with these annotations, it will help you react when something happens on that chart and it should make you a better trader or investor. The first topic to be covered today is opening and saving chart notes. The first thing we need to do is create a sharp chart. I'm here on the free charts page, and you can see at the top, we've got the links to the main web pages for stock charts. And if you don't see those, it means your browser is not opened up wide enough. So here I am narrowing the width of my browser and those links disappear. But have no fear, you can find them up at the top right. We have a drop down menu and there are the links to the main web pages here at Stock Charts. At the top of every one of these main web pages, you're going to see a symbol entry box there in the middle. Out on the free charts page, we also have a symbol entry box just below the main sections there. So if I enter a symbol here and then click go, I will get a sharp chart and I can begin adding annotations using chart notes. The annotate link for the sharp chart can be found down at the lower left, just below the sharp chart. And if I click that link, the chart notes workbench will open up and I can begin annotating. And once I've drawn an annotation, I can save that simply by closing it with the X here. So if I close it, ask me if I want to save the changes. Yes, I can choose my chart list. I'll just leave it in the current chart list for now and I'll name it index ETF. And that chart will now be saved to this chart list for future reference. Next up, we're gonna teach you how the toolbar works. The chart notes workbench opens as soon as we click the annotate link. And we know that it's open because you'll see the toolbar at the top and on the left. And the first thing I want to point out is the select button. And that's got the little arrow on it and it's on the top of the left toolbar. So when I click it, it becomes shaded gray. And that means it's the active selection for the annotations. The selection tool is important because I can use it to select an annotation that is already on the chart. So I've got this trend line and I can make it shorter or I can adjust the size of this call out box or I can even just move this trend line over. Now at the top, first we have the colors on the left. I can change the colors of an indicator. I can change the width of that line, make it thicker or thinner. I can make it solid or dashed, and I can even add an arrow if I want or not. On the left-hand side, you can see that this trend line button has a little triangle at the top. And that means when I click it, there are other annotations there to use. We have a vertical horizontal line as well as auto support resistance and parabola. This text button is for text callouts, arrows, Elliott wave annotations, and price. We have a shapes button that opens up to rectangles, ellipses, and triangles. 
We have a Fibonacci arcs button that opens up other Fibonacci indicators as well as cycle lines and the rough regression channel. And below we have some single buttons that you can use if you want to undo or delete all annotations. Next up we're going to show how easy it is to draw trend lines. If I want to draw a trend line, I will go over to the trend line button and I will click it to select it. And out pops a list of possible lines that I can draw. And I'm just going to select the trend line. So I left click on that once and it is selected. And you can see the cursor or mouse changes. And then I go to where I want to start that trend line, left click, hold that click down, and then drag the trend line how I want to draw it. Once that is drawn, the trend line is still the active annotation, so I can immediately draw another one. And you can see that this trend line is active because the two yellow handles are highlighted, which means I can move it because it is active, or I can easily change the color of that trend line by moving over to the top left and choosing another color. I can also quickly change the line width or the line style and even add an arrow. Now the other annotations work pretty much the same way. If I want to draw a Fibonacci annotation, I go over to the Fibonacci arc button, I click it, and that opens up the list of annotations, and I select Fibonacci retracement. I click, left click, hold down, and I drag how I want to draw that Fibonacci retracement. Once you've made your annotations, you're going to want to save those, and that's the next thing we're going to learn. Now I'm going to work with a chart that is already in a chart list. So here I've got a chart list, and say I want to work on the semiconductor SPDR. So I open up that chart in the chart list, and then I click the annotate link. And as soon as I add a trend line, you're going to see over here that this save button here turns red. So I can click save as I work. So now it is black and that means the chart is saved. If I add another trend line, you can see that that button and again has turned red. So I click it and I can save that. So I can save my work as I go. Now what if you forget to do that? Well it's not really a problem. So here I'm adding a couple more trend lines. And if I close this, then I will be asked if I want to save the changes, and I can choose yes to save those changes. This last section will show you some shortcuts and where to find help. If you need more help on chart nodes, if you go to the left hand toolbar at the bottom, you will see the question mark. And if you click on that link, you will get a pop up and it will have a cheat sheet for shortcuts. And these shortcuts will pertain to Mac or Windows depending on which operating system you're using. I'm on a Mac right now, so these are Mac related shortcuts. And if you need more help, there's a link at the bottom of this shortcut list that will take you to our user documentation where you can read more on how to use chart notes. And that concludes this instructional video for chart notes. Be sure to check out our other instructional videos, and thanks for watching.